Joining us now, Republican Congressman from Colorado, Ken Buck. Congressman, thank you very much. You voted no. You voted for Tom Emmer. But you also say you don't want Tom Emmer to be speaker, that you don't like Tom Emmer. So what's going on? Uh, it was an attempt at humor, uh, Katie. I, I voted for Tom Emmer. Tom is a friend of mine. I don't think the speaker's job is, is something that uh, is going to be very easy for the next 13 months. So I was making a joke about uh, not liking Tom and that way uh, supporting him for speaker. I think we are in a situation right now where uh, Congressman Jordan loses more votes in uh, the next round of voting if he takes it to another round of voting than in the last round. There may be a couple people that move uh, over <clears throat> to vote for him. I think there's a number of people that will vote against him in the future. Humor does not come off when someone <laughs> sends me your, your verbatim. I'm sorry. Uh, my apologies for that. Let me ask you about what you want. When, when I was speaking to you the other week about Steve Scalise being speaker, you said you wanted a few assurances from him. One, a number on uh, what the deficit would be, a spending number. Um, and uh, number Two, that he would come out and say definitively that President, former President Donald Trump lost the election, that President Biden won at fair and square. Are those two things still what you'd like to see from Jordan? Uh, yes, they are. Um, I, I, I don't know that my number for spending is going to be what uh, moves the conference, and so I am uh, absolutely willing to compromise. I have made my point, um, I think, uh, as, as loudly as I can to those who are listening that we have a spending problem and we need to address it. Uh, I think it's been heard. I'm not going to hold up a speaker vote for, for that. I am concerned that Congressman Jordan um, uh, has not uh, agreed to, to say that uh, Donald Trump lost the election and Joe Biden won the election. I'm concerned that uh, the events leading up to January 6th included uh, Congressman Jordan participating, not not in, in you know, the riots or anything like that, but participating in uh, the challenge to the election um, in ways that I think uh, are, are really inappropriate. And I think that Republicans that run in the future are going to have to run on Jim Jordan's actions, and that's going to be very difficult for them. So Jim Jordan doesn't get the speakership, you believe. Uh, what happens then? What do you what do you suggest? Is it giving Patrick McHenry some more power in the interim? I think one of the options is to have a 30-day speaker. Uh, Patrick McHenry would be the logical choice for that. I think that uh, undoubtedly we would uh, give him full power so that if there is an Israeli package, uh, supplemental spending package that comes over from the White House, uh, we would have the ability to vote on that. Uh, we would have the ability to vote on uh, Ukraine aid and, and some other issues that are uh, urgent, not emergencies, but urgent. Um, I think that there are there is other business that we need to get done in terms of spending and, and making sure that we keep the government open and in 30, 31 days. So if it's not going to be Patrick McHenry after those 30 days, who would you support? Well, that's that's the question, really. The, the, the giving, get, taking this pressure off and, and getting into conference and having a discussion uh, without the emotion, I think it will come to an agreement on uh, Tom Emmer, on Kevin Hearn, on Mike Johnson, on someone that is uh, interested in doing it and that uh, can bring the different groups together. Um, is there any possibility that there is a, a unity leader? Maybe it's not Hakeem Jeffries, maybe it's somebody else, but somebody that Democrats will vote for as well, somebody that's committed to taking the majority opinion of the House, both Democrats and Republicans, those, that vast middle, and pushing forward legislation that they prioritize so nobody is beholden to the extremes of either party. I think uh, this 30-day speaker idea with Patrick McHenry may be just that. Uh, I would be surprised if the Democrats didn't embrace uh, uh, something along those lines. Um, and I, I think a, a large number of Republicans uh, would do that also. In fact, uh, you know, 80, 90 percent of Republicans uh, would do that. So that's one way to move forward for, for 30 days. Can your party, the Republican Party, lead? Have you proven, has the party itself proven that it's just not capable of leading right now? Our party has a four-vote majority right now. We had a five-vote majority. Uh, someone retired to be with his um, terminally ill wife. And so uh, we have a four-vote majority. Um, I don't know that there has been a four-vote majority in a long, long time in, in Congress. So it's very difficult to bring the different factions together uh, to, to lead in this situation. So I, I would say to you that we've passed a number of bills, a number of spending bills, a number of other bills, um, and we will, we will as we move forward. Um, but right now, obviously, we are not leading. So what's going to happen for the rest of the day? Jim Jordan's people just told NBC News and other reporters that, that they believe there will be another vote today. Is that what you anticipate? 
I, I believe it is up to Jim. Uh, if Jim wants another vote, he'll get another vote. If he wants to go to conference and have a discussion, uh, we'll do that. So I'm, I'm just waiting to hear what the next move is. They've said there's going to be another vote, so I trust them. Uh, I don't know the timing of that vote. Why do you think that more people in your conference are going to decide not to vote for Jim Jordan after this? Uh, because they promised him their vote uh, on the first ballot, um, but told him that they, they want to move on and, and, and they will not vote for him on the second ballot. And, and I don't have any names for you, but, but my understanding is there's, there's eight or ten people in that category. Congressman Ken Buck of Colorado, thank you very much as always for joining us. We appreciate it.